All right, welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about comparison operators. Now, this is a fundamental concept between all programming languages. It really comes down to if something is true or false. And these are uh, binary options. Computers don't think in any sort of gray ground. It's, you know, it's either it's black or white. It's true, it's false. It's yes or no. And to get started, uh, we needed to know a lot up until this point. Now, this point is really how you give any sort of program the ability to think. If a variable comes out true, I do something. If it's false, do something else. Now, that comes down to like an if-else operator, and, and we're going to get into that in the next lesson. But right now, we're just talking about comparison operators. Now, comparison operators, they're not very difficult. Uh, and really, the only math you need to know is if something is greater than, less than, or equal to. There's one other sort of caveat in there, and that's the one, does it equal to or does it not equal to? So instead of really trying to explain this, I think the best way to, to learn this is to just write it on the console. I'll talk as I go. And uh, if you have questions about how these work, feel free to ask them in the Facebook group. Yeah, so let's just get started with this. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is 1 is equal to 1. This comes out true because 1 is always 1. But what happens if I said 1 is equal to 2? It says false. Now, the reason that this is comparing and not assigning a variable is because there are two equal signs. If we said 1 is equal to 1, JavaScript is going to think, oh, well, I'm going to assign the variable named 1 the value of 1. And what happens? Nothing, because your variables cannot start with a number. Now, what if we used floats instead of integers? We said 1.0 is equal to 1.0. That's true. What about 1.0 is equal to 1? That's also true. All right, so I just cleared the console there. And uh, so that's basic integers, right? Uh, 1 is equal to 10. We know that 1 does not equal 10. Only 10 can ever be 10. So this turns out to be false. But what if we started comparing strings together? What if we said test is equal to test? Well, this is the exact same thing comparing essentially against itself. So this has to be true. But what if we said test is equal to something else? Now we're comparing two strings together. So the data type is the same. However, the values are different. So test does not equal something else. Just because the data type is the same does not mean that this is necessarily true. And when we hit enter, we see that this is in fact false. So what happens if we start putting some of these into variables? So let's put variable name is equal to Caleb. That's just my name. Now we wanted to say name is equal to equal to. This is comparing it. So this is not going to compare this name. It's going to compare Caleb. Remember, capital K, because JavaScript is case sensitive. So if we said Caleb is equal to, let's spell my name technically, the proper name, what happens? It's false. But if we said Caleb is equal to equal to, we're comparing it, Caleb with capital K, it's true because it's the exact same now. Now, if we do a strict comparison, that's three equal signs, and we put the exact same comparison as above, but only with, with one additional equal sign, it's still true. Now, the reason for that is because this value right here is literally the exact same. So it's not comparing just the value, it's also comparing the data type. Now, what if we said, age is equal to 45. And then we compared age is equal to equal to 45. That's true. What if age is equal to equal to equal to 45? Also true. What if age is equal to equal to equal to 45.0? Also true. JavaScript realizes that 45 is the same as 45.0. Or what if we did the inverse, 45.0 is equal to, equal to equal to age. Also true. So it doesn't matter what side the equal to comparison uh, the variable lives on, as long as it's being compared. That's all it cares about. Now, there are other comparisons that we need to really consider here. I'm just going to clear off the console here. And what if we said age is greater to, greater to or equal than 45? Also true. Age is greater than... 45. That's false. Age is 45. It is not greater than. It is greater than or equal to. 
Before we continue, let's take a look at some of the different operators that we have. We have equals, a strict equals, does not equal, a strict does not equal. We have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. And then when we, when we want to mix and match comparisons, we have, this is and. So instead of writing the word and, we use two, two ampersands. Or when we want to say if something is true or something else is true, we use two pipe symbols, and this stands for or. Now let's declare uh, again, let's redeclare. Age is equal to 20. And uh, if you live in the United States, the drinking age is 21. So drinking age is equal to 21. So now we can say, essentially, if the age is greater than or equal to the drinking age, then you can go out and buy a beer. We would compare that by if the age, not 20, but age is equal to or gr greater than the drinking age, then we can execute some code. Now, this always has to turn out true. In this case, it didn't. It turned out false because age is less than the drinking age. If we did the inverse, we wrote age is less than or equal to drinking age, we get true. What if we just did age is less than drinking age? Also true. But what happens when we start comparing variables to other variables that do not exist? So what if we said age is equal to equal to something else? So as you see, we get something else that's not defined. But what if we said age is equal to, and we know the other data type is undefined? Well, that's false because age is in fact defined. But what if we said something else is equal to undefined? Well, again, JavaScript gives us a reference area and says that something else is not defined. And to do a strict comparison, gives us the exact same thing. So why should we ever use a strict comparison? Well, let's take a look at age. Age is 20. What if we did age is equal to, as a string, 20? That's true. What if we said age is equal to 21? That's false. So JavaScript realizes that this 20 is the same as an integer, which is technically not right because this is not supposed to be a number. This is considered to be a string. This is where we start using strict operators. What if we said age is equal to equal to equal to 20? We get false. So while it's true here with a loose comparison, it's false here with a strict comparison. Now, why would you ever use that? Well, because sometimes a user is going to input information and when they input it like a, a number or text, it always comes back as a string. So if the user's age input happened to be 20 and we want to compare it to be at least 21 or higher, we would we could do a loose uh, a loose comparison greater than or equal to 21 false or if it had to be an exact age for example someone winning the lottery could only ever be the age 20 has to be exactly 20 we could do it this way or we could do it with a strict operator like this that comes out true as well okay so now on the inverse we can do does not equal to right so we still have age is 20 what if we said age does not equal 20 that's false because age is in fact 20 but if we said age does not equal any other number anything that's not the number 20 this will turn out to be true so we could say age does not equal literally anything oh can't have those in there now we can do a strict comparison as well what happens if we said age does not equal to undefined. Well, that's true because age has been defined. That means age has an, a technical value of 20. What if we said uh, something else does not equal to undefined? We still get the same is not defined error. Now, what if we created another variable, but one of those blank ones that we've seen just a little bit of? Let's call this variable empty. Comes back as undefined because variable hoisting, we type in empty, we get undefined. So what if we said empty is equal to undefined? 
Well, that's true. Empty is equal to strict, undefined, also true. But what if we said empty does not equal undefined? That one's false. So it's the exact opposite of what you see up here because empty, which was declared as a variable, does not have any sort of information associated to it, is in fact undefined. We know that using the not equals or the strict not equals comparison that empty is in fact false. So what I would like you to do, just for a little bit of practice, open up your console and start writing some variables and just compare them together. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, I want you to get a feel for how these work versus whether it's right or wrong. Right or wrong can come a little bit later. I just want you to understand how these work. The comparisons that you have access to. You have equals, a strict equals, greater than or equal to, greater than. You have less than or equal to. You have less than. You have does not equals and does not equal strict. So go ahead, give these a shot. And when you're done that, we'll see you in the next lesson.